What is up everybody and welcome back to Godspeed ZRZ. Now today I want to go over something that's pretty much on topic with the last few videos I've posted and some of my opinions have struck quite a few nerves for you guys. So today I want to go a little bit more in depth, give you a little bit of the reasoning and give you a better understanding of the correct tire size that you should go with for different platforms, for different builds and hopefully help you guys make the right decision the first time. That way you get the look and the performance from the tire size you get right from the beginning. Now there is one thing that I really want to get out of the way and we might as well do it quick. So that's my opinion on what a TJ, a JL, and a JK should have, what lift kits they should be running to clear that set of wheels and tires, whatever the case may be. So just to make it quick and simple, TJs in my opinion should be on 17s and they should be running 37-1350s. That's just what I like. And anywhere from a 3.5 inch lift with flat fenders up to a 6 inch lift if that's what it takes to clear it. For the obstacles you'll be doing off-road now whenever we're talking about a jk 35s immediately you should be able to clear it i typically i've only messed with uh rubicon jk's in the past but 35s immediately and then 37 13 50s while you're doing a small two and a half inch lift and you're clearing everything else out and then i like 38 15 50s on 20 by 12s that's just the look that i like and it's actually performed very well with the stock equipment and I haven't had major issues in the past. Now to go on to the JL, for the JL, it depends on which one you buy, but initially, if you're buying a Sport, if you're buying a Gladiator Sport, anything like that, I say 35s immediately, get to learn the vehicle a little bit. You won't be embarrassed to drive it around because it won't be on 33s or 32s, depending on how you buy it. And then as soon as you do a lift kit, or if you're just willing to do some trimming and do a little bit of extra work to get the clearance you need, I advise the 37, 13, 50s on a 20 by 10. I think that's a great looking look for the actual JL because it is a wider vehicle, just like the JK as compared to the YJs and the TJs in the past. And then pretty much anything past that, I always love the 38, 15, 50 look on a 20 by 12, negative 44 offset on the JLs. I think it's an amazing look on any setup and I would love to do it on a TJ soon. I just haven't had the chance to do it in the past, but really and truly, if you go anything above a three and a half inch lift, I advise 40 by 1550s and just cutting out everything to get the clearance that you need. Now, a lot of people just don't like that, but they don't think it would clear well off road. You'd run into a lot of issues, but I swear I've beat mine up in the past as much as you possibly can. And I never ran into any issues. No bump stops, anything. Just different fenders that didn't really give me that much more clearance than what the factory ones did, and it performed great. I could drive up on cars, I could drive over cars. I did a lot of stuff with that car, and pretty much any trail you can possibly imagine, and it performed amazingly well. Whenever people tell you you immediately need to re-gear, you need to change the axles, you need to run a six inch lift just to clear whatever setup you're thinking, you don't have to believe that. Buy it, just buy them. Cut everything out if you want to. Or do once you have the wheels and tires, I promise you'll have the commitment to do the research to find out what it's really going to take to run that set, whether it be gearing, whether it be suspension, or anything like that. You will find out once you have a set like that, and it just gives you a little bit of an extra push to really do it the right way. But that's just my opinion. I like to lay it out there because I really just don't like any skinny tires. I don't really like 17s that much anymore. And I'll give you the backstory on why I probably don't like skinny tires and why I don't like thin wheels. So on my first setup, on my first TJ ever, my initial set of wheels and tires I ran on that vehicle with a two and a half inch lift. Now keep in mind, this one was the four cylinder. So I was trying to keep the weight in mind without doing any gearing. I had the 14 gear stock with the four to one transfer case. And I ended up running 33 by 10 fifties on a 15 by seven wheel. So, Having that, running that all through high school until I eventually ran the 35 by 1250s, it just made me want wider tires. 
I always wanted water tires, I always wanted water wheels, and since now I'm actually able to do what I want and get the wheels and tires I want, I run the widest sets I can because that's just what I like. So if you like 1250s and you love just running 15s or 17s, whatever the case may be, great. It's just not what I want to do. I like running wide sets of wheels and tires. So that's why I run the massive sets that I do. So I don't care if you don't like the look of the 1550s on 20 by 12s, because I don't care about the look of your 37 1250s on a 17 by seven. I just don't care for it. That's why we all have different opinions. And that's basically why I needed to make this video. Uh, so just to get started, whenever it comes to making your selection for your first set of tires for an all new Jeep Wrangler or a new one that you've just purchased and you're trying to build up, there's so many different options out there. And what I've learned throughout my past experience is that most customers really just don't have an idea of what look or what performance they're really trying to achieve. There are a few key elements you really need to take into consideration just to make sure you're started off in the right direction for making the right decision on your actual tire size itself. So whenever you're talking about a TJ, a JK, or even a JL at this point, you're almost always gonna start out with a 17 inch wheel. So with the classic 17 inch wheel, most of the time you're gonna be a 17 by eight or maybe up to a 17 by nine with some aftermarket wheels. And if you plan on sticking with something close to that setup, I typically do recommend going with more of a traditional size tire, you know, something like a 35 1250, a 37 1350, or maybe even a 1250, if that's just the look you're going for. Now, to talk about performance off-road, whenever you limit yourself to just the 17 inch wheels, there are a bunch of really meaty, really nice off-road options for tires to match with that. Typically, if you're gonna be running a JK or a JL, you'll go on up to 37s, and most people will just run the 1250s, like I've said before in the past, to me that just gives it more of the pizza cutter look. It is nice off-road because it's a little bit more narrow, can get you in a few tighter places, but your actual street presence just seems like it's lacking something, especially if you're running the stock fenders. We all know they're pretty wide all in of themselves, so if you're not running aftermarket fenders that are trimmed down quite a bit, the 1250s typically just don't look that great. And I've got this set out here to give you guys a reference for size. This is a 35 1250. Well, it's actually a metric. It's a 315 70R17, but pretty darn close to a 35 1250. And that's on the stock 17 by, I believe it's a 17 by eight Jeep wheel. So with that setup, whenever you're running, you know, close to a 1250, it isn't that wide. Now, whenever I had these on uh, the JL Rubicon in the past, I'm sure you guys saw in my last videos, it did stick out just a hair. Uh, not much past the fenders though. I would say maybe a good, maybe quarter inch, if that, that may be pushing it. Because the back spacing and the offset on this wheel is just not that aggressive. So whenever you do go aftermarket, of course with a different wheel setup, you can get some more aggressive back spacing and offset to really push that tire outside of your fender wheel. Even if you're not gonna run a 1350 or a 1550 wide tire. So there are ways to get that stance a little wider but the tire itself is going to be limited to its actual size and what wheel it's on. I have seen many 37 1350s on these stock size Jeep wheels, and it actually looks pretty good. You can see the bulge it has here with just the 1250, and it is pretty aggressive, don't get me wrong. Whenever you look at it down the side, obviously it's definitely going to come into contact, or if you're off-road, you're definitely going to touch the tire before you would the wheel, but that's pretty much the case for any of these. Now, if you do run a 1350, it just gives you a little bit more protection. And whenever you're aired down, you actually do have more traction, of course, with a wider tire. So that's something to keep in mind. But for the 17 inch wheels, I will say with at least the stock wheels, you are always a little bit more limited in terms of what tire sizes you can run. But there are a lot of options out there for the 17 inch wheel, simply because, you know, Jeep's been doing it for quite a while now. Now to actually go beyond the limitations you'll run into on a 17 inch wheel, let's talk about what you can get aftermarket. So in terms of aftermarket, once you step up to, let's say the average is probably a 20 inch wheel, even if you are more of an off-road oriented driver, once you go up to a 20 inch wheel, you're gonna run into a wide range of possibilities, whether it be width, whether it be offset or backspacing. So for these specific wheels I have mounted up now, they are 20 by 12, negative 44 offset with 4.5 back spacing. And for that, it really gives you that aggressive stance sticking outside the fender and also not necessarily stretching the tire I have, 
but with a 1250, if you're running a 1250 on a 20 by 12, you would be getting more of a stretched look. So I actually could run 35 1250s or even 37 1250s on this 20 by 12 wheel, but like you saw on the 17 with the 20 by 12, it gives it a little bit extra protection whenever you have a narrower wheel with a wider tire. So for that simple reason, I always, I never even consider having a tire width even close to the width of my actual wheel. So for this setup, I have 38 1550s. And with the 1550s matched with the 20 by 12s, it still gives me plenty of sidewall protection. You know, something for the rocks to actually hit before it would hit the wheel. And that's something you really do want to keep in mind if you actually plan on using this thing off-road. For me personally, I typically go with the widest uh, actual tire I can or the widest setup I can clear just because that's what I like. I've had a lot of comments in the past. Uh, whenever I talked about the 37-1250 look, a lot of people got offended. And for me, if you're on a four-door Wrangler, if you're on a four-door Jeep in general, I don't think you should run 1250s once you get up to a 37 inch tall tire. It just doesn't look right. Now, if you're on, if you're in a TJ, a YJ, a CJ, well, I think CJ should be a little wider too, but aside from that, the TJs and the YJs themselves, you can get away with 37 1250s on the 17 by nines, and nobody's gonna take a second look at it other than telling you it looks good. But whenever you get to these bigger, wider, taller, just all around bigger vehicles like the JK and the JL, you need a wider tire to compensate for that, at least for the look. I understand there's different performance benefits for the 37 1250, 37 1350 as well, and it makes sense. But in almost any situation I've ever been in, if any of my friends were on 37 1350s or even 37 1250s, and I was on 38 by 1550s, without even airing down, Obviously, I was making more contact to the road or the off-road trail more than they were completely aired down. So throughout those experiences alone, I've learned that the 1550s actually do better as long as you have a decent quality tire. Once you air down a 1550, especially on a 20 by 12, your point of contact is absolutely massive. So if you're going up massive rocks, slick rocks, anything like that, or even just needing to grab more mud, it does it. It grabs it better. And on the road, it actually has some, they were saying you're just doing this to look good on road, but actually on road, the wider tire you have, the worse it drives. I guess people don't realize that because they never ran tires that wide before, but you sacrifice a lot of the drivability on road with these wide, massive tires. Now, whenever it comes to the actual talking point of clearance, you do have to keep that in mind. So for me, I've had a little bit more experience with different vehicles in the past a lot of the Jeep Wranglers so I pretty much know what I can get away with and I also know what is about to cross that line so for these 38 1550s it is a little bit too big I completely understand that at full articulation I'm probably gonna rip my fenders off but that's something I've already made the mental sacrifice for so even before they're ripped off I'm ready for them to be gone for me I look at things quite a bit different I like to take a lot of the stock components absolutely as far as I can to see where the actual point of failure is. And for me, that's a little bit more exciting than just going ahead and ripping off a good part and putting on the aftermarket part then. For me, I love to test out how far you can really take, let's say the axles for instance. On my last Rubicon, I had 40 by 1550s with 20 by 12s and absolutely destroyed it off road. And I had the stock gearing stock Dana 44 wide track HD axles and it held up amazingly well now talking about another set of 38 1550s I ran that on a JK and absolutely destroying it off-road the only thing I actually ran to failure was the electronically engaged rear locker the only thing that happened with it was the actuator got stuck where it's magnetically actuated it got stuck in the locked position so aside from that I've honestly not had any massive failures on any of my Jeeps with these crazy things I've done to them in the past. So for me, it's really hard to justify throwing in another set of $10,000 axles just because somebody else says that I need to. For me, I just haven't yet. Now to give you guys a visual representation of a 17 by eight with a 35, 1250 on it versus a 20 by 12 with a 38, 1550, hopefully you guys can see the difference here. So this is my hand on this one and then I mean it is a massive massive difference 
and it's easily apparent the on-road appearance is night and day difference between the two sizes even if this was a 37 inch tall tire now once you do stretch a 38 15 50 out on a 20 by 12 i would say we're closer to a 37 inch tall tire um, now whenever you stretch out these tires just a hair most of them do have recommended wheel width sizes that they're actually measured off of for the 38 15 50 I believe it was measured on a 10 wide wheel and this is a 12 wide wheel so I would say we've lost somewhere around uh, close to half an inch of height on the tire itself and whenever you're running a say a 37 13 50 they're probably also measured on a 10 wide wheel so whenever you put it on an 8 wide wheel it may be just a hair taller but it's also going to lose a little bit of that width so with this it's got a little bit more width than what it actually measures out from the spec sheet and it's got a little bit less height so these are probably closer to a 37 inch tall tire but the width is probably closer to 16 inches wide now that they're on this setup so there are a few different things you need to keep in mind whenever you're trying to make your selection for your tire size there are a wide range of options and just a simple thing like running a 20 by 10 with negative 24 offset can make a major 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 difference compared to a 20 by 12 with negative 44 so whether you're trying to decide on your wheels, whether you're trying to decide on your tires, there are a lot of things to put into consideration just to make sure you're running the right set or purchasing the right set. That way you don't have to do it over again and just waste your money and try to sell your wheels and tires so you can get another set. I've been in that situation many times before and a really great point of reference to make sure that you, know, you are making the right decision is custom wheel offsets. They have a gallery and you can filter through the different tire sizes, the different wheel sizes, and even the different lift kits, as well as the trimming that's required to run the set of wheels and tires you're looking at. So it's a great perspective. It's a great look, especially if you're just not that familiar with tire sizes, wheel sizes, and offset. It really helps you hone in on that look you're trying to get and make sure you're, you're actually gonna be satisfied with what you're purchasing. So to wrap it all up, the top three things you really need to be aware of before you even dive into looking for your wheels and tires is the performance you're trying to get, your limitations that you have, whether it be gearing, whether it be clearance, or whether it be the actual size of the wheels you're trying to put your tires on. And number three, the most important to me and to most people that actually use these things and are proud of them is the look you're going for. So the look is one of the big, big key things that a lot of people either completely focus on or they don't consider at all and really and truly i've seen so many cases to where people have been convinced that they need to either run a 1250 or they need to run a 1550 or they need to run a 17 by 9 that's the only way or they need to run a 20 by 12 and in my honest opinion there are just so many different options out there that you really need to filter through and find what you think is going to look best and what you think will actually match your machine the best and do what you need it to do because in all honesty, whenever it really comes down to it, if you're not the one that's happy with the set of wheels and tires you're running, whether you get all the compliments or no compliments at all, it all comes back down to how you think it looks and how you think it performs. Those are the biggest key things, and a lot of people just overlook it because of someone else's suggestion. In my honest opinion, I go with the biggest, the tallest, the widest setup I can go with, and I really don't even consider the limitations of my actual configuration in terms of clearance or even gearing all the actual internal components. Because if I have a look in mind that I wanna go for, I just do it. And I add on all the supporting modifications after, after I've had a fair chance to actually see what it needs. I don't always like taking someone else's opinion because I like to learn a lot of these things for myself. But I'm fortunately in a position now where I can learn these things on my own and I can learn from my own mistakes. Whenever you're just starting out or whenever you're just now getting into the whole Jeep game and you don't have as much money to spare, you need to take a couple considerations from other people. Just because you don't have that extra cushion to fall back on, or you don't have the know-how to get rid of the set that you bought for the same price you bought them for. There's a lot of things to consider for a new set of wheels and tires, and hopefully today this at least helps you guys begin your search uh, and start narrowing down to what you're actually looking for. Whether it be the performance, the look, really you just need to find what you think is gonna look best and perform best for what you have in mind for your vehicle. Because at the end of the day, your opinion should be the only one that matters. A lot of people on here will be mad because I don't like 1250s or I don't like 17 inch wheels and that's what Jeeps are supposed to have. But it's just what I like. And I'm obviously very proud of the things I've been able to put together and the stance, the performance I've been able to achieve on 
the last countless Jeeps I've done or other vehicles in general. So just go out and make your own. Do your own thing and see how it looks. See how it performs. And if you need to add on some supporting modifications down the road, don't be afraid to add it. So definitely always approach these things open-minded guys and don't be restricted based off of the actual capabilities of your vehicle at the current time or someone else's opinion. Just decide what you wanna go for and go for it. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video, guys. I know this one was a little different than what we typically do, but let me know what you guys thought about it and let me know what your own opinions are down below in the comments. I always love to hear it and I love to hear where other people's heads are actually at on all these different setups, these different lifts and anything like that. Now, if you didn't already know, I did drop my actual first merch ever. So I wanna go ahead and put the link down in the description below. This is actually what the shirts look like. If you wanna support the channel, please go over to the store and pick you one up. Let me know what you think. But as always, guys, if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. You'd be very surprised as to how much that actually helps. But until next time, guys, just take it easy.